Hi, this is Lyle Dennis of GMVolt.com. I'm here today with uh, Nick Zelensky, who is the uh, Volt uh, Chief Engineer of the Chevy Volt. Uh, great. Yeah, Lyle. Good to see you again. It's good to see you again. Yeah, we've had a little organizational changes here on the Chevy Volt. So. Yeah, what, what exactly happened? I heard uh, something about that. Yeah, let me give you a little description of what happened. Uh, we have a couple new appointments as part of our Chevy Volt team. Uh, a gentleman named Frank Faber came from our General Motors uh, European operation. He was in charge of all of our advanced development in Europe. He's come on board now as what we call the Vehicle Line Executive okay. and Global Vehicle Chief. So he's got a dual role, okay. which is very important because it means this program that we're doing on the E-Flex and Chevy Volt has moved up in the organization as something that we're really working hard to execute and get into production. So it's giving a lot more legitimacy. When did he come on board in that, in that position? Oh, Frank's been on board now, I'd say, about five months. Okay. And he's been uh, out stationed here, and yeah. you know, it's, he's over at our tech center, and he's taking charge of the program. Uh, okay. Another announcement was uh, Andrew Farrow was on yeah. board, and Andrew is going to be taking on responsibility as our vehicle chief engineer for a range extended version of the e system for Chevy Ford. I'm going to continue being involved in the program, but I'll be focusing on the full cell version of the e-flex. Now, I guess, why did the General Motors take that initiative? Are you guys planning to be uh, as uh, planning to bring the uh, fuel cell volt to production just in the same way as you are at the range extended version? That's one of the, I think one of the messages as part of this organization is we're treating the e-flex and Chevy Volt program like our other production programs. So we're putting in place the normal staffs that are involved in the development of these kinds of programs. In my own case, I've worked on fuel cell vehicles for over four years now, so I'll be focusing and continuing to focus on the fuel cell vehicles as we go forward. And Andrew's come on board. Andrew actually worked on our EV1 program. Oh, okay. He's involved in the battery development as part of uh, EV1. So he brings much more wealth of experience on what these drive vehicles and battery systems that will be able to uh, bring into this program. Okay, so are you so you basically handed over the reins to because you were working on the engineering of the car for some right. time, weren't you? Yeah, my role I know the viewers are familiar with it, but within General Motors we have what we call an advanced vehicle development center. All of the early part of our program is done through advanced vehicle development. And I'm one of the vehicle chief engineers with an advanced vehicle development. So I had the e flex program from the beginning to get it kind of roughed out get the general concept pulled together, make sure it's valid, get it ready so we can move it to the point so we can move the production program. And so we're taking those steps as we go forward. So is the introduction of Mr. Farah mean that we're at the point of where production is going to move forward at a faster pace? Is that what that represents? Well, we've been very aggressive on the E-Flex program right from the very beginning because we think it's a real game changer for General Motors as well as the country here with plugging up the engine center. Uh, yeah, we still feel very strongly that the production decision is going to really be dependent on the batteries that are available. So we really can't commit to production timing for sure, so we have some better handle on the battery performance. But we're going very aggressively after the program, bringing Frank as well as Andrew on board, I think is evidence of the commitment that we have within the company to do this program. So some people I've read about, uh, you know, people, we've discussed this, I heard this before about Mr. Farron, people are saying, well, maybe this means GM is, you know, not as serious now because they're going to split their attention away from building the range extended, you know, ICE car, which we expect, to thinking about fuel cells, which a lot of people think may be further down the line along the timeline. So how can you answer that? The way I would look at it is when we rolled out the deflex originally over boy, almost a year ago here at the Detroit Auto Show, we tried to make it very clear that it's a flexible propulsion system that will have versions that use a large battery with a, a generator and motor set on board, a range extended vehicle. We're also making it adaptable to fuel cell vehicles. I think this is just evidence that we're really taking that approach seriously because we'll have one of our team focusing on the range extended version, another part of the team focusing on the fuel cell version. The beauty is Andrew's right next to me in the office, so we're working very closely together. So, um, the, uh, would you say that the engineering has been worked out for the uh, for the E-Flex platform? I mean, we know that the batteries are not, you know, ready yet. Uh, I've heard the battery packs are not ready yet. Um, is the rest of the engineering there? I mean, is the e platform, other than the batteries, you know, fully functional? Well, the battery continues to be the challenge. We're working very hard on the battery. I think you're well aware, and your audience is probably aware of the announcements we made 
the relationship with CPI, as well as the relationship with Continental. We're working very aggressively in with them on battery development. I think what's going on now is we just have so much work to do and we're so dedicated to make this thing happen. And we're getting to the point now that it's important to make this thing move forward. Okay. Um, another question that comes up is what type of motor are, are we going to see? And uh, I know we've gotten the answer that it should be an AC motor. Can you, is it an AC induction motor or can you tell us a little yeah, bit more about it? It's effectively an AC induction. It's a little bit different. It's a three phase motor, but it's effectively an induction motor. Okay. And the, the final uh, power of the motor uh, is really been decided upon? Well, we're working through the details and, you know, as any program proceeds, there'll be a little bit of changes on the program for the details and specifications. But one of the things I can say is from the specking of the systems and the components that we're using, what we revealed at the auto show is pretty consistent with the actual content that we have in the vehicle. The performance of the primary drive motor yeah. is effectively the same thing we reveal in our concept vehicles. The size of the battery that we're using is the same thing we're all right now. So yeah, there will be changes a little bit to the configuration of the motor. But I think we're pretty true to the concept vehicle. Our number one priority is the 40 miles of electric or battery only driving range and the range of the version. And based on all of our computer models, I think we're going to be in pretty good shape. So yeah, that was another thing that came up is uh, we were talking about how that 40 mile range uh, has been calculated. Yeah. You know, it, I understand it was done on the city driving cycle, yes. uh, which I think has an average speed of 21 miles per hour. Yeah, it varies, you know, from standing start kind of stuff, maybe 40, something like that. But on the average, it's probably that long. And you guys feel very confident that the car will achieve 40 miles in that environment. Yes. Are you at all making public how the car is expected to achieve in the highway driving side at higher velocities at 55 miles a year? We haven't really revealed the details and specifications, but our anticipation is that if you run a, to run a highway schedule, it would be very close to the performance on the city schedule as far as the battery and electric drive range. So still getting 40 miles even in that ballpark, but you have to understand it's very sensitive to the way that you drive. Yeah. So if you're a very aggressive driver and you're doing a lot of wide open yeah. throttle accelerations, that drains energy and drains oh, out of drive sorry. rates. But if you follow the schedule, like the city schedule, uh, 40 miles, we think is very achievable based on what we've done so far. Oh, that's great. That's great. People will be very excited, I think, to hear that. And do you imagine the car will have a system to let the driver know, hey, you know, you're driving a little too aggressively, you know, so people want to try to keep their, get their 40 mile range, know how far they have to drive. Is that something you're thinking about, like a, a queuing system to the driver? That's a good point, because one of the things that we've done, uh, General Motors does a lot of competitive analysis. We look at what our competitors are doing, we look at the features they have on their cars, and one of the things we found on hybrid vehicles, uh, like Toyota and some of our other competitors have been doing, we found that displays are very critical. The way that you communicate with the driver and the information you give the driver is very critical. So one of the key elements that we're putting together for the Chevy Volt is really what are the right displays and what kind of information do you want to give to the driver. Uh, we've got a lot of different options that we're developing. And we're developing special displays to give that information to the driver. So, so you want to keep them uh, in touch with what's going on. Exactly. We want, we want to give them the right information. We want to make it very easy to understand. Oh, okay. Oh, that's terrific.